Hello everyone, the December Review here, back again with the TV show review today. We have the third season of the excellent Girls 5 EVA series. Spoilers are ahead, so make sure to check out the show streaming exclusively on Netflix. Girls 5 Eva is back with Season 3, and I must admit, I didn't think we'd get here. After Season 2, things seemed to point towards the show's end, as original network Peacock announced that it was not returning, but you can't keep a great show down for too long, and Netflix stepped in and picked up the series. All three seasons are available to watch right now, and I highly recommend checking it out. Before we move ahead, let's take a look back at some of what I mentioned on previous videos for the show. The acting is top shelf as the ensemble cast plays off each other, creating a can't-miss show that is laugh-out-loud funny. I feel like the series would work if they were strictly about either one of these sides. By having a complete world around them, Girls 5 Eva goes from great to mandatory viewing. So, so clearly I am a big fan, and with Season 3, that streak continues as the group of semi-dysfunctional friends stumble their way through another adventure. For those not familiar with the show, Girls 5 Eva revolves around a group of friends who had some great success back in the 90s and eventually moved on from the music business. Years later, one of their songs are sampled for a big hit, and the friends reconnect to perform the show on The Tonight Show, which kicks things off for the group as they prepare to make a full comeback. The show stars Sarah Bareilles as Dawn, Renee Elise Goldsberry as Wiki, Paul Appel as Gloria, and Busy Phillips as Summer. They originally had a fifth member of the group, Ashley Park as Ashley, who passed in an infinity pool incident but has been memorialized with a New York City park bench. The show was created by Meredith Scardino, who has quite the comedic writing resume as she's written for David Letterman, Stephen Colbert, and the unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Tina Fey is also an executive producer on the show, so it's clear to see why this thing is well written as it is. When we last saw the group in season two, they were skipped over for a spot as an opener for a big tour. This prompted the group to declare that they would start their own tour. As we pick up with the new season, that is exactly what they attempt to do. But in true G5E fashion, things don't go very well. Season three is a shorter season than before, going down from eight episodes to six which makes it even more binge-worthy as you can watch the whole thing in one evening as each episode clocks in just under 30 minutes or so. But since there are a few less episodes, that doesn't mean that the show is any less funny. There's plenty of new shenanigans for the cast to overcome, and it's all smartly written and precisely acted as ever before. And they certainly do find themselves in some crazy situations here as the group booked themselves to play Radio City Music Hall a prestigious final show for their tour. However, things get off to a rough start as they meet the ultra-conservative owner of a nightclub that they are ready to play who wouldn't approve of their more spicy material. And he just so happens to own the majority of clubs that their entire tour is set for. In a moment of despair, they say they're a John Cougar Mellencamp cover band, which wins approval from the owner, but isn't exactly a great solution. Though it is great to see the band rehearse some Mellencamp material. This sends the group off into a chaotic run of events leading up to that Radio City concert. Episode 3 stands out for a few reasons as there's some great moments to be found. The band ends up staying at Wiki's place and meet her parents for the first time. All of the quote hardships that Wiki has mentioned about her past wasn't exactly true though in a memorable scene. She does a great job spitting every fib she supposedly said. There's also a great narrative involving Summer as she unknowingly joins a pyramid scheme for whitening gummies. There's a morning scene here after she ate too many pieces of the scheme's gummies that was pure comedy gold. It's a highlight, no pun intended, of the series. The band eventually finds its way back to New York to play that big show, and while they somehow manage to not sell any tickets for it, the group does what they do best and put on a great performance without any problems whatsoever. As a fan of Sarah Bareilles, another key ingredient for the series is its musical connections. Here is Dawn, she is the group's main songwriter. And while Sarah has written some of the best songs of our generation over her career, and created the musical foundation for the hit Broadway show Waitress, as Dawn, well, she can't seem to find that winning note on a consistent basis. 
It's a great counterbalance for fans of the singer-songwriter and helps add to the show's comedic beat points. Season 1 brought us nine songs for its soundtrack, including the show's ultra-catchy theme song, Famous Five Eva. Season 2 ushered in 12 new tracks, and Season 3 brings us 12 more, all containing a mix of writing credits from the cast. One thing the series has that helped make it stand out in the ever-changing and expansive streaming universe is its ability to work on multiple levels of storytelling. Yes, this is a comedy, and a very funny one at that, with jokes coming in at rapid fashion from every cast member. But the show also has a real-world center to it, especially earlier on in Season 1, showcasing its leads' lives with great sincerity. If you've never seen Girls 5 ever, I would highly recommend heading over to Netflix and starting things up from the beginning of Season 1. It's a very funny and breezy watch made perfect for a Saturday night binge session that will keep you laughing all the way through. For Season 3, those laughs continue as the band soldiers on with their dreams of returning to the top of the musical mountain that they once stood. Season 3 feels a bit more focused in many ways, with a tighter narrative and destination. Which isn't to say that the other seasons were less focused, but with most likely budget constraints as the series shifted studios, and maybe just the storyline itself, the season felt like a mission more so than before. A three-hour road trip film split into different chapters. And the end result is the continued excellence of this rather funny and smart show, and I hope that there will be a Season 4. I've already gave the series the coveted December Review 5-star award for excellence, and with Season 3, I see no reason to change that now. Gonna be famous forever, cause forever's too short, so what are you waiting, five?